Thanks for joining us for The Drive Back, the movie podcast where we imitate our favorite thing to do after a movie, which of course is to talk about it on the ride home. I'm Garrett, and as always, I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Adrian. Hey, how's it going, everyone? And today, we have another Rewatchables. Which are what, Adrian? Rewatchables are where we rewatch the film that we've both seen before, and we let you know if it's worth it or not. That's right, and today, we're taking another look at the Rock'em Sock'em movie that never was, which is Real Steel. So all of this and more coming up on The Drive Back. Alrighty, back this week with a rewatchable for Real Steel, the Hugh Jackman fighting robot movie. Um, did you see this movie when it first came out, or uh, what's yes. your what's your experience with this one? I saw it in theaters, um, and I I think I just really liked the concept, especially as a kid. I think it's an awesome kind of film with that kind of rock'em sock'em style, but brought to life on a bigger scale with a lot more action and drama. And I mean, yeah, I went and saw it in theaters. Yeah, I think I saw this, like, right after it came out on, like, home video. I think this was back, still, oh. still during the time when you could go to, like, Blockbuster. Sure. And it was one of the ones we rented and watched for, like, a family movie night or something while I was still in high nice. school. Um, I think, yeah, it actually came out right when I was in, like, my, my first high school film class. And, you know, I was able to kind of look oh. at it a little bit deeper for the first time. Um, but even more so now. So let's go ahead and talk Real Steel. Um, released in 2011, um, it was directed by Sean Levy and stars Hugh Jackman, Evangeline Lilly, and Dakota Goyo. In the near future, robot boxing is a top sport. A struggling ex-boxer feels that he's found a champion in a discarded robot. It was nominated for one Oscar for Best Visual Effects. I feel like that's... that because this, that, this first, I'll, I'll go ahead and talk about this. I, that synopsis is taken from IMDb. And uh, that second line where he feels that he's found a champion in a discarded boxer is not accurate. No, that is, <laughs> the, that is the child. Yes, that is the son. <laughs> um, but uh, really cool that it was nominated for Best Visual Effects because I feel like this movie had pretty pretty good visual effects. Um, especially, I when, think it totally holds up. Yeah. 100%. There are some times when the textures on the robots look a little video gamey, a little bit you know fake. But like I think that's just what they're looking for. Yeah, and I think even then, that those moments where you can see through it is like, you've got to be looking for it. I spent quite a bit of the film on this rewatch actually looking at the robots and being like, it's pretty crazy that just nothing's there. Because it was definitely on par with some of the stuff we get today. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely, and that might make sense because of the fact that uh, Steven Spielberg produced it. I mean, that's probably where the money comes from. Um, but I thought it was really, really good, and I thought it held up really well. Um, and I just, yeah, I mean... All around, I think that they deserved that award. Yeah, well, it was a nomination, wasn't a victory. We'll have to see. Well, they should have won that award. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, like let's go ahead and go some uh, spoiler-free thoughts before we dive a little bit deeper um, into Real Steel. So, what? Are, what are, um, anything you want to talk about before we dive in? Uh, I mean, that's kind of the synopsis. I mean, it's kind of the movie. If you haven't heard of it, that's literally what it is. But. Um, yeah, I mean, I I would go rewatch it, especially if you watched it as a kid and it has that kind of nostalgia feel to it. Um, I think you might get something different out of it on a rewatch. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a fun movie. I don't think that it's necessarily the pinnacle of like sci-fi family films. If if anything, and we'll kind of get into this more as we dive in, but I do think it's a little too formulaic. Um, in its storytelling, um, so mm -hmm. you know we'll, we'll we'll dive a little more into that. Uh, worth it to note though that this film lost its visual effects nomination. It was also nominated the same year as Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and Transformers: Dark of the Moon. All four of those lost to Hugo, which I highly disagree with. Of, of the five, I think... Rise, That's Rise such an of, Oscar grab. Oh my yeah. gosh. Rise of the Planet of the Apes should have won. Definitely. Yeah. If if not that, then Transformers. Uh, yeah. 
I mean, no matter how bad the Transformers movies are, the visual effects the are incredible. Scene. Exactly. That's what. So, so it should want for that. But I will say, I agree with Real Steel being up there with those nominees. I feel like that it definitely holds up. It's pretty crazy to look back at a film and be like, "This could be made right now." Like yeah. it literally looks like it could be filmed this year. It's really crazy. And it's and it's interesting because I really feel like as as I was watching this movie, I was like, "Where have I seen this movie before? Like, where have I seen? Well, besides obviously watching it before." <laughs> Um, but I was like, where have I seen this? And it's directed by Sean Levy, who just did uh, Free Guy, the mm. Ryan Reynolds video game comedy movie. And that felt very similar to this in terms of like its tone and its world and all that. So I, I think Sean Levy kind of has a style that's really, sure. for, at least for those two movies. I have, I have yet to kind of figure out what the rest of his movies are. But, um, but let's go ahead and drop a spoiler warning for Real Steel if you do want to watch it. Um, I was able to watch this on uh, Netflix. It's available on yep. Netflix until October 6th. So if you want to watch it, you got five days left to do so as of the time of this recording. Wow. We so, really nailed it, huh? Yeah. Well, I think by the time this comes <laughs> out, it'll be like two days, one day left, maybe. Yeah, wow. So hopefully you guys did your homework. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and drop a spoiler warning for Real Steel. Um, so that's out of the way. Um, what are some of the strengths of this movie for you? I actually think this movie's awesome. I did not... I feel like it slept on, for sure. Um, after rewatching it, I feel like I found myself enjoying the story of this movie from beginning to end. Um, I Yeah, it might be a little formulaic, like you said, or it might like kind of just fall down the same tropes as you'd expect it to. And yeah, I would say it's pretty predictable. But I think that's the point. It's just a feel-good movie. And I think it's one of those rising to the challenge and beating your adversary, David versus Goliath, as they say in the film. And I think that's just, it is what it is. And it's nice to watch a movie that doesn't rip my heart out unnecessarily. That just tells me a good story. And I'm enjoying all of it. It's got good action. I just thought it was all around really slept on. Really, really slept on. Yeah, I, th I think as far as movies you could show your family, as far as movies you could show your kids, it's definitely slept on. Um, I think it, it's it's fun, and I think not a lot of families are going to look at this and have any issue with it. I think you're going to get great performances from Hugh Jackman and Evangeline Lilly. Um, I, in Dakota Goyo, who plays the kid, is kind of annoying at first, but then does get better. He figures it out, him. yeah. Um, but I think it's intentional. Um, once you can kind of get over the initial unlikability of Hugh Jackman's character and even the kid... Um, I think you can kind of see through it once they start to bond a little bit more in their relationship. Um, Which but, I think is intentional as well for us as the audience to be like, they're unlikable. And then, yeah. oh, I like them. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a part of the formula. Yeah, the formula that's really stick, stuck to. Um, but there's one thing I do want to point out. And this movie started off really bad for me. I don't know, I don't know if it started off for you. There's straight up animal abuse at the beginning. Like when the bull is forced to fight the robot... Oh like, yeah, that just it feels so wrong. Yeah, but you got to think about. I, I completely agree with you. But this movie came out at a time where that was very much not in the forefront. I think, like yeah. now in our in our twenty twenty one eyeballs, we're like Steven Spielberg. How could you produce this? <laughs> like, <laughs> but to be fair, that part does take place in Texas, and they can't even nail human rights. So I mean. Oof. Or maybe maybe. What's the problem. state of comedy again? Um, it's not Texas. That's just a state <laughs> yeah. of horror. Um, but uh, any, anyhow, um, I, I, I do think, yeah, the performances are good. Evangeline Lilly, I completely forgot, was in this movie. Yeah, same. Um, also, Anthony Mackie, Falcon and the new Captain America, is in this yeah. movie. Um, and Hugh Jackman, it's a Marvel get-together. You know, It's a pretty good cast. I mean, all around, it's yeah. it's not bad. Except the, the one actor who plays the, uh, I guess the Xboxer turned like rodeo announcer the guy, the cowboy, the villain partner? character. Yeah, I forget, I forget that actor's name. Um, let me look him up real quick. He he's literally famous. plays. He plays an over the top villain in everything he's in, or like this over the top. Kevin Durant. He, yeah, he, he reminds me of someone that could be the villain in like Spy Kids Six. Like it just. <laughs> You're like, okay, there he is. <laughs> it's the, the evil brother of the dinkster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's his villain type. Oh my god, that's a deep cut with the dinkster. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, and then we've already, we've already talked about the visual effects. Visual effects are great in this movie. They Super look, good. They look yeah. great. I think 
what really nails it for me isn't necessarily like because you can have textures that don't look that good you can have lighting that doesn't look that good but when you have a full visual character mimicking the motions of a live action character pretty pretty on point like pretty perfectly that's that's something special and i will say there were a couple scenes where you could really tell that they were showing off that that technology like they had specific scenes to show off look how human like we can make this robot look and that was a little transparent but Again, this movie, like, yes, it's that formula. Yes, it's transparent. Yes, you know exactly what you're getting. But somehow it still manages to feel really good. I mean, maybe it's just the fact that there's giant robots punching each other. <laughs> that might have a huge thing to do with it. But I do feel like the performances lend to a pretty engaging story. I mean, I feel like I was invested in the relationship, father and son, and growing together and fighting for each other. And, and honestly... The scene where he's got a the the voice recognition goes out in Adam, and he's got a shadow box, absolutely insane scene. So cool! Everyone's crying. Great, great scene. <laughs> um, yeah, I think finally we can talk about the the story because um, I I have to disagree. I don't think I was able to engage with it just because it's a story we've seen so many times and it's not done better here it's like you know what's gonna happen they don't want to be together oh it's gonna be rough for the first couple th things they do and then all of a sudden they're gonna start to feel connected they're gonna get some victories and then they're gonna start to like each other and just when they get to the point of really liking each other they get separated again oh boy and then something happens where they have to get back together and then while this movie does throw the curveball of you don't really know whether or not they'll be able to see each other again. Most likely, I mean, they most likely will, because the fact that it's a family movie and it's a good, you know, good time, and, you know, you see his adoptive parents at the end, like, whoa, cheering in the crowd, and, you know, maybe they kind of understand this is his future. Um, you know, I think that, and also the, the, the curveball of them losing the fight. Yeah, again, kind of deviates from expectations on that one. Which is really the only time it does, for, at least for me. Um, where they lose the fight, but they end up being like the people's champion instead, which I think is a cool message. I, I loved the scene yeah. where he goes, people's champion? Sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> and the whole crowd's like... <laughs> I think the whole crowd just goes insane. <laughs> it that, The whole last fight sequence is, is, again, and I think this is my biggest problem, is because it's a family movie, because it's a... A little bit more formulaic. It does. It never feels like there's stakes. Like you know that they're gonna come out in some sort of victorious position. Yeah, but I, I, I think I liked it for that reason, and that's. I think that's just how I like. I was maybe looking for this kind of movie. Yeah. Right now, but something that was just. Like, fun. It, 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 there weren't any, like, real, like, oh, what's gonna happen? It was just, let's watch robots fight each other and people be happy. No, yeah, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this movie is bad, I'm saying this movie is no, really yeah. fun. It's just, it, it, they, these movies have their place, and I, and I, and I, totally. I completely understand that. You know, you have to have something that kind of fulfills the, you know, the storytelling need. You know, for every 50 real steals you get, you get a lamb. You know, <laughs> someone's got to do it. <laughs> someone's got to pull the trigger on the lamb human yeah. hybrid thing, yeah. which I think that's next week. So we'll see how that that's goes. been. A, I think that's been circulating in film communities for what, 70 years. And someone finally pulled the trigger on lamb. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's been it's been a script since the time of Citizen Kane. And if it came out during that time, it would have been the true Oscar winner. You know, you always hear it. Martin Scorsese saying someone's got to make that lamb. <laughs> Who knows? Is he hungry? Does he want to see the movie? We'll never know. <laughs> By the way, completely unrelated to Real Steel, I am so excited that the next Martin Scorsese movie or project has Brendan Fraser in it. Can we, yeah, have, no. can we just go ahead and applaud that for a moment? Like, wherever you that are is... right now watching or listening to this, <laughs> applaud in your car. Like that That's like, how did... You are. What happened? Is my question is, how did that come together? <laughs> <laughs> Cycling it back. But I will say, I do want to talk about, I think we should have a discussion on it, because what you're saying, but I, I'm very curious now to wonder the actual, just to talk through it, it could be another episode, but 
does knowing what's going to happen in a movie make it less good? No. I, just, that's it. the easy question. It, it doesn't make it less good. I mean, we okay, know... Because that's how I feel. It depends on what you're looking for out of it. Yeah, because I think we've had different situations with this. Like, for me in this one, like, no, it's not a bad movie at all. It's a very fun one. Is it the most original? No. But, and, and at least in its storytelling, but you can, like, it's, it's like, you know, instead of going out and trying that new restaurant where you don't know what's going to happen, it's like going to McDonald's and getting your favorite thing. Because you're like, oh, okay, this feels good. I'm like, I, I, you know, I'm happy now for that 30 minutes, and then you realize oh. you've wasted money. Um, but yeah, it's about 30 minutes. That's about the timeline. <laughs> <laughs> but like, where, whereas, like, you know, for you, for you, it was like the lighthouse. You said you had figured it out pretty early on in your head, or like your interpretation of it, and that kind of lessened the experience for you. Yeah, so, I think it depends on what you're looking for. May, and maybe it's due to the kind of film. I think maybe you can push off that that dissonance with a movie like Real Steel or Transformers or something like that and then with a movie that's trying to be something a little bit more like The Lighthouse or um, what was the other one that, uh, The Green Knight you were, you're yeah. like, you're like mm, I don't know that well I didn't think that one was predictable though I just didn't like oh. <laughs> well you're also wrong yeah. um, but, uh, but I wonder if it has to do with expectations like I think going into this yeah. film, for example, my expectations were like, oh, I remember, like I get, I know the gist of the film. Like, let's just rewatch it. And because I had low to medium expectations, I was actually pleasantly surprised. But I think going into something like The Lighthouse, where I'm expected to be blown away, and then kind of feeling like I figured it out, maybe that's what like I was like, oh, I feel like this was supposed to be a, a more of an experience. But I, yeah, maybe it's just about maybe this movie just fell into that like ah, pleasantly surprised category. Yeah, which I think I feel like, I feel like being pleasantly surprised is always going to be more you know like agreeable to your system than being like I don't eh. think anyone's ever pleasantly let down. I don't think uh, that. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of a single time I've been pleasantly let down. Uh, Where you're like, man, that sucked, and that was awesome. <laughs> actually, no, that's a lie. I'm I'm gonna make a call out on the show right now. Call out to uh, our my friends, our friends, uh, Kevin and Nadia, and Stacy. Last night we watched. Um, we were at their place for Nadia's birthday. Happy belated birthday, Nadia, on the podcast. And Good. we watched a uh, a horror movie from 1990 called Franken Hooker. And I don't know what you're expecting with that movie, but I was pleasantly let down because <laughs> it was so bad that it was enjoyable. Like, that's nice. That's so nice. I, I do have to disagree with that one. I think that one was pleasantly let down, but it's not very common. <laughs> maybe, think, maybe let's let me. Here's my here's my final pitch. I don't think people are ever pleasantly underwhelmed. I don't. Th well, I think if you go into a movie expecting it to be bad, and then it's worse than you thought, but it's in a funny way or something, mm -hmm. that's always fine. But I think what you're trying to say is pleasantly let down or pleasantly disappointed by a major Hollywood release. Yeah, like you go in, yeah. or or anything. Like I mean, we also play video games, but like how a lot of people were with Cyberpunk, right? Being let down, I don't think anyone's ever like, yeah, Cyberpunk is definitely not what I bought, but it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think it takes a lot for people to be there, and I think that this movie, if you go in with the right expectations, that it's a kids movie, and that it's just fun, and it's not gonna rip your heart out, and it's not gonna lead you through a hedge maze of morality. It's just gonna show you a good time and watch and let you watch a couple robots fight. It's awesome. It's a super fun movie. Yeah. So let's go ahead and dive into some final thoughts. Unless there's anything else you'd like to really talk about. No, I, d I guess we didn't really touch on them, but I feel the performances were all pretty good. Oh, um, it was. Yeah. Hugh Jackman, Evangeline Lilly, Anthony Mackie. I feel like it all comes together pretty well at the end. Um, all these kind of like distant personalities all tie in to create kind of this one big final scene which is really really good um but yeah i mean i think i i'll I, this is the title i'll give this film is real steel slept on i don't know why this movie didn't get like way more recognition in the children's film sphere um maybe i don't you know what i don't know because i think 
it came out during what 2011 so there was a lot of stuff coming out that year you also had captain america you had um thor were coming out that year um rise of the planet of the apes transformers dark of the moon so there were a lot of bigger films coming out and i think that just because it wasn't a franchise or a a sequel or something it kind of maybe slipped beneath the cracks but that's where a lot of good films go unfortunately yeah, I mean, those are my final thoughts, but I'll say it right here. I'll take a real steal, too. I'll take it. I'll watch yeah. it. Show the kid all grown up. Show Hugh Jackman the way he is now. and uh, The robot. With some better, better some like more up battle. With some more upgraded visual effects, I think would be interesting. I mean, I yeah, I definitely think with the stuff we have now, it could look even better than what it already does, but I... I'll take another one. I really will. I feel like it was super entertaining, and I would love to see that world built out more. It kind of reminded me of, like, Alita Battle Angel. The uh, Have you seen it? Not yet. I don't know. Then it doesn't remind me of Alita Battle Angel at all. <laughs> and those are my final thoughts. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, all right. And what, so what is your score for Real Steel, Adrian? My score is a 77. I think it is surprisingly good. Um, I definitely went in with, like I said, medium expectations, and I feel like I was pretty entertained. Don't expect too much out of it. Don't expect to be blown away. You're not getting any Oscar performances, but you're getting a story that can carry itself through and delivers on a lot of those good heart moments. And it's uh, just all around pretty fun. Sure, sure. Um, I think, as I kind of mentioned earlier, it's, it's a fun, but it's a little too formulaic. Um, and, and in that, I don't think you really get a lot of, there's no real excitement or stakes for me. I mean, beyond like the visual spectacle you get of robots fighting each other, that's obviously excitement. But I mean, like storytelling wise, there's no like twists, there's no turns really. It's kind of, it follows the beats of every family movie ever. Um, but it does surprise with an interesting uh, twist of the loss at the end, the actual losing the fight, um, which was like a, a moment I was like, oh, okay. I didn't see that happening or see that happening. <laughs> Um, but, uh, with that, I gave, uh, Real Steel a 64. Nice. So, still not a bad score. I feel like, I feel like anything you give above, a, like, a 45 is still at least worth one watch. There's something and, redeemable. And I will say, after what you said, it kind of reminded me, to an extent, of the new Godzillas. That, like, what you're going to see is two monsters fighting each other. Mm-hmm. When you go to see Real Steel, you're going to see monsters or you're going to see robots punch each other like that's the purpose of going um so it's kind of that same thing where like plot and everything does kind of take a backseat to that spectacle um but this one does a great job with the story as well so that's why it lifted up a bit for me because i feel like it kind of kind of brought it all together in a, in a pretty good way sure but uh, let's go ahead and uh, that's gonna bring us to an end for this episode of a the drive back it's rewatchable for real steel adrian if if our fans want to follow these robot fighters somewhere online, where can they do that? Uh, you can find us pretty much anywhere online at the Drive Back Podcast. If you see us here on YouTube, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button and smash the like button. And make sure to ring that little bell like we're fighters in a ring uh, to make sure you get notified. We post every Monday here. And as well as on YouTube, we post sometimes a little bit of extra content. Uh, if you look up the Drive Back Podcast on any of your... Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, any of those podcasting apps, you'll go ahead and find us there. We post every Monday, so make sure to follow. And then if you want to talk to us or comment on our reviews or give us suggestions, the Drive Back Podcast on Instagram is our number one social media. And uh, we always post when we have new episodes, and we love to talk to fans there and read your guys' little comments on what we've said or what we've done or even just the movie that we're reviewing. So go ahead and give us a follow there. That is absolutely right. And next week... Make sure you do your homework. We got two movies next week. It's a show and tell. Adrian has selected for me to watch the movie Push, which I remember and know nothing about. So that's going to be interesting. Usually I at least know the poster or the trailer or something. And I am making Adrian finally watch, not making, selecting for Adrian to watch uh, the classic Pulp Fiction, which launched Quentin Tarantino's career after Reservoir Dogs. Um, Push is only available to rent, unfortunately, at this time, whereas Pulp Fiction is available on HBO. So if you have HBO... Question. Yes. Do you even know who is in Push? I know. Isn't Chris Evans in it? 
Yeah, okay. I just want, I, I, I know. didn't know if you were going to be... Okay, there's quite a few. I didn't know you're going to... I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but those are going to be the two movies for next week. So make sure if you want to watch those ahead of time, and you know, that way you can think about it and discuss it with, with us, or well, we're not really going to hear your voice, but you, know, you can at least have some sort of notion going in on what you think. Um, that'll be for then. Um, on top of that, um, all, as always, I plug my... Uh, my blog here where I do a lot of film reviews for new release films and uh, just the ones that I watch during the week. My catching up posts every week talk about every movie I watch during the week, which I'm watching about eight to ten films a week right now, which is who oh boy, including the ones we talk we cover here. Um, and also my review for Venom 2 should be on there uh, this weekend. So hopefully I get the chance to actually go out and see that because I'm hearing the mid credit sequence is incredible. That's all I've heard. But anyhow, I haven't heard that, but yeah. Well, you, I've heard it now. I'm not saying anything. I will say, well, I'm being I'm being facetious here. I did see the leaked one on YouTube, and uh, oh man, it's gonna make the entire hour and a half worth it. So, anyhow, uh, that's gonna bring us to an end for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week with Push and Pulp Fiction on a show and tell. We love you so much. We'll see you next time on the drive back. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Drive Back. Make sure to be on the lookout for new episodes every Monday, and make sure to follow us on social media.